Well, some of the people who are not staying on the Rome extension are going home today. That's the bus that's going to be taking them to the airport in a few minutes. This is our Michelangelo Hotel. And right there, again, is St. Peter's Basilica. That's how close we are walking distance. And that's had to leave, uh, lose about a third of our people, but the rest are going to go for the next three days through Rome. They'll be coming out that door in just a moment. You've already been oh, to the yeah, Holy first. Land with us. I've been to the Holy Land. There is no way to travel other than with Steve Ray. I wouldn't do it any other way. Highly recommend it. He brings the places to life. The guides are great. The food was fantastic. And this has been a wonderful experience for my son, too. Michael, 17, what a great experience for a young man. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. She kind of covered everything. It's definitely great. Uh, we loved our Holy Land trip, and this was just... Yeah, I mean, see, getting to see everything, uh, not just a trip that focuses just on Rome, even though we'd love to come back since we didn't get to spend that much time here. But yeah, seeing everything, all the, the Eucharistic miracles and all these holy sites was just amazing. Thanks and for with coming. ease, too. Everything was taken care of. Everything we didn't was have organized to do anything, perfectly. and we got to all the places we wanted to see. Well, thanks for coming with us, and God bless you both. Thank, Thank you, you so God bless much. You. And we're going to expect great things of you, Michael. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs> this yesterday the water that you had when we're walking along the forum there's places where water is gushing out of fountains and little along the sidewalk you can refill your water bottles with those because it's excellent water and Rome has been blessed with good water and it's tasty so feel free anywhere along the way when you see water coming out like that to fill your water bottles second of all I'd say the next few days there's going to be a lot of gypsies and pickpockets where we're going so keep your stuff close don't take what you don't need and don't let those gypsies get close to you. They're quicker than lightning, I'll tell you. We've had experiences. We've never had anybody get pickpocketed in our group because I push them away and I warn you ahead of time. But don't let them get even close because their hands are like lightning. And you won't even know what hits you. The little kids are the fastest. So anyway, just a word to the wise. head of this church of St. Peter and Change. There is the coat of arms of the Pope and there is the coat of arms of uh, Donald Whirl. You can tell it's the Cardinal because it has the red hat there. We're entering the church of St. Peter and Chains or Basilica of San Pietro in Vincelli. This is walking up towards the front and in the front is this. These are the chains. Part of them were from Rome and part of them were from Acts chapter 12 in Jerusalem. When Pope Leo brought them together, the chains from Rome merged in with the chains from Jerusalem. And here we have the reliquary of the chains of St. Peter. Everywhere in the church is artwork of Peter being released from prison in Jerusalem. That's him right there where the angel came in Acts chapter 12. And then here's Peter leaving, escaping from prison and come the guards are asleep and afraid. And then we have this painting of Queen Eudoxia who brought the chains from Jerusalem and gave them to Pope Leo. People often fail to look up at the ceiling, but here's a beautiful Lynette of a miracle because of the chains. The chains are being touched on a man with demons and they're flying out of the man.
Our guide for the morning is Martina. For me, the biggest attraction here is the Chains of St. Peter, but for most people, they come here to see Michelangelo's Moses. This marble statue, so elegant and so real looking. It's said that Michelangelo, when he finished it, he said, speak to me, speak to me. We are walking past the Colosseum on our way to San Clemente, but we're gonna go inside the Colosseum later this afternoon. Later here, taking our group through Rome. Ah, here ha. they come. Hello. Here they come. Two so thirds of the day. hello. Two thirds of the group stayed to go through Rome, and a third went back home and didn't do the extension. But here's the hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> Heading to the Church of San Clemente, past the Colosseum. As we walk to San Clemente, we see the area where the gladiators used to be trained. There was a tunnel from here under the road into the Colosseum. It's just beautiful <laughs> today, full of poppies and yellow flowers. Here we are approaching San Clemente, and the photo police are out in force today, so I'm getting pictures as I can. As we're entering into San Clemente, we go down these steps into the subterranean part of Rome, back to the first century, the fourth century, 12th century churches. Here's where St. Cyril is buried and the Mithraic temple. Then we took a tour of the upper church, which is a very beautiful place. And this is the Tree of Life mosaic. It's like the Garden of Eden, but it's the new tree in a new garden, bringing about all the beautiful things in life. This is a pan view of the whole upper church. And underneath this altar here that you see is where the bones of Ignatius of Antioch, he was eaten by lions in the Colosseum here. And both the bones of Ignatius of Antioch and St. Clement of Rome are buried here. Everybody's scattering for lunch at cafes and coffee shops and restaurants. We are arriving back at the Colosseum. Now we are meeting up with our guide, Liz Lev, and we're gonna take a tour of the Colosseum from the inside out. So I know that you guys started out your morning, you went to see St. Peter in Chains, which is going to be very helpful in understanding uh, things about Christian Rome tomorrow and how difficult it is for the Christians to make their way into their city. By 450, the Christians can only make it that far. So they've been legalized for 150 years. like this it makes the Bible come alive because look at what Paul says here he's going to read one verse uh, Colossians 2 15 he's talking about Jesus dying on the cross and what his work did on the cross how he, how he destroyed the devil and took away our sin he defeated death and then Paul says this he disarmed the principalities and powers that's the devil when he said principalities and powers that's referring to the devil and evil spirits and all the powers of evil when he disarmed the principalities and powers he made a public display of them. Imagine Jesus. 
Jesus marching through heaven with all of the devil and all of the, his minions following him, utterly destroyed and in chains, and they all have to bow down and acknowledge God at that point that they've been defeated by the cross. He disarmed the principalities and powers, made a public display of them, triumphing over them through the cross. I just see Jesus walking in. The devil and all those guys are out in front of him. Jesus walks into the cross and goes right in front of God the Father and says, we did it. We beat him. But, you know, this is one of the things to think about when you go to the Holy Land and hear the Roman, you read the Bible. Remember, Paul is writing in the context of this, not in the United States. He's writing in Rome where there are triumphal arches and where there are victories being happening right during his time. And he's applying all of that to the scriptures he writes in. So just a little bit about thinking about context of scripture while you're here. built as a very clever vestibule into a first century building in back of it, which is a medical library design or built by Emperor. We drove back through Rome to our hotel. Here's the view from our street and the hotel to regroup and get ready well, to go out. Our group is all arriving La here at Ristorante La Pilata. Janet and I have been eating here for over 25 years. Good friend, I mean Mario, Mario the uh, owner. And when I take you in, I'm going to show you there's pictures of our family when we brought our kids here 20 years ago. Hello, hello. Hi. Good to see you again. Wow. Here we're getting settled in our whole section back here. And I just have to show you this. This is pictures of our family up here. That's us. We wrote a letter to them. And we also have this is our family right there. And there's others as well, but uh, all of these people who have uh, come to the restaurant, and we are here from 20 years ago. Mario! How are you? Good to see you, Mario. You look good. You look good. Okay. Yeah, trim and fit. Well, good. So here we're all settling in at the restaurant. So here we just entered the restaurant and we already have our lasagna. I think it's some of the best lasagna ever. I love this lasagna. Let's stop. We've been eating it for 20 years. Is that good lasagna? I tell you, it sure looks like it. And then, because we're good friends here, look at that. He got us a bottle of wine and it says Steve and Janet Ray, 2007. 